Hey folks, Scott Fisher here. This month, I'm gonna take you through one of my latest paintings from Magic the Gathering known as Bloom Tender. Fun card to do, did it for Double Masters, and this was one of four pieces I did through the set, and uh, I was pretty happy with the way this turned out. Let's check it out. Okay, first things first, after getting the assignment, we're gonna start with thumbnails. I did three pretty cool ones. The lower one's the one they picked. Things like costuming and proportions would be solved later in this stage, which is the digital comp. So this is my digital work above it, still pretty rough in area, so I do a clean drawing next. This is a graphite drawing. I then will scan this back into the computer, blow it up to scale. This painting, I believe, is 22 inches wide or so. And then what I do is rub graphite on the back of that drawing, transfer it down the way you see it lightly on this board here, and then I start working it. Now I'm using FW Acrylic Ink to draw this thing in, and I'm using this, which is an Alpha 6 Corporation liner brush, which is nice because it's got a nice long wick. This kind of brush is like a pinstripe artist would use on a hot rods. And I'm able to pull all these cool different lines and swirls in and out and uh you know just nice curves and it gets these nice drag marks but yet if you snap the brush it'll break in fun ways and do some little fan effects if you need it to notice i'm not actually inking this thing in black i'm actually using kind of a mixed gray on this because as you've heard me say before i don't want to fight this drawing later if i do lighter paint on top of this i don't want the drawing to have high contrast i would rather re-establish the drawing in a bit and uh, I just need this as a guide. So this is my guide post you see me doing here, all the way down to me outlining those lotuses on the bottom. And that's sort of a funny thing because you may have noticed all the lotuses in this painting. And that was something I added between the thumbnail and this stage. And I just thought it'd be cool, man. I never have done the black lotus. So I thought, well, I'll put a black lotus and what the hell? Why don't we do a lotus for every color? There's a red lotus and a blue lotus and a green lotus and a white lotus. Why not to have some fun? So I was so excited about that notion. I went right in with the paint and established those lotuses quickly. The white one's not pure white. It's more of an off-white, so we can still kind of see it. After that, it's time to have fun. I've got a brayer out there for a second, and I'm just throwing water and a dirty green on it. I threw paper towels on there where it got too soupy and lifted it up. I'm trying to create a textural smorgasbord here and go crazy with it. Now, once I get that initial texture down, I'm adding more texture with more of the same paint going darker, more opaque, but look, I'm still able to see my drawing through this. Now, you know I love to establish the negative space as quickly as possible because those middle values I threw on top suddenly look interesting. It starts to have something down there, almost like a tonal paper if you've ever drawn on a piece of tonal paper before. So I'm just knocking in all of that green, bluish green first, and that's all pretty much one color. It has some variety to it based on how thin or thick the paint is or how much paint is on the brush as I'm filling it in, but you can see already that, boom, we've got this nice composition showing up immediately, but this was a pain in the ass. I'm having to paint between all of these leaves, but I mapped it out perfectly in my underdrawing, so I knew every little shape that I had to fill. Now, you're gonna watch me with these leaves because I've actually created the leaves in three values. There'll be dark leaves, then a middle value leaf, then a lighter leaf, so I go in with the darkest leaves first. Gonna go ahead and knock those things in. I'll try to let the underpainting probably exist as some of the middle value leaves, and we'll do lighter leaves below. I also knock in the tree trunk at this point and do a little bit of crude sort of bark modeling on there. I don't want to get too textural and too interesting down there because I don't want to distract us. Still so many little bits of negative space that I have to work into. So here we go again, just slowly filling it all in. Sorry, that's a little bit blurry, but you get the idea. Now let's do the lighter passage of leaves. And you can see here that there are indeed three values of leaves going on at this stage. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna fill in the ground value leaves or not. I can't quite remember. Let's find out together. Using the same liner brush, we're going back at it. We're establishing our drawing again, getting a little bit darker with it. And I do slight corrections, add lines here and there as I go, just to really flesh the thing out. Now I'm scumbling some local color, some base, middle value for the skin so I can get that established because I won't really know how far to take things until I establish these base middle values. It's super important uh, when I work for my technique that I know what the base middle value of something is and then I can work it a step lighter or a step darker as you see me doing here. So now I know, okay, according to my value study I'd done earlier, I want this dress to be darker than the negative space that's behind it. So we're going to go ahead and fill that in using this liner brush again to add some details after I did some big stuff with like a half inch brush or a three eighths inch brush or so. I like to use flats a lot for that kind of work. Flats are really expressive. You can use just the corner of a flat or you can use the whole flat or you can lightly drag it and get some dry brush effects going on. 
Okay, working up the highlights a little bit on this face, adding some purple into the mix here. I know there's going to be a bit of purple light coming off that black lotus in a little bit, so we're already kind of factoring that in as we go through this. Scumbling in, correcting the negative space, correcting the silhouette as we go, knocking out some obnoxious branches that I thought had too much contrast and we're messing with the uh, the view. We're going to work this face again. I keep coming back to it. And the reason I keep coming back to it more and more is because I don't like it. I'm not happy with this face. And I know it at this stage. So we'll see what I do as we continue through this. But in the meantime, let's distract ourselves by painting up the Black Lotus and running some of that purple pinkish light over and around uh, the hand and use some edge lighting. Now look, covered up the face. Nope, got to go. Retransferred it down. Okay, now let's paint it again. Now here's the funny thing. It took me way less time to paint it the second time around. That's almost always the case. Something about the first one, if it's taking me too long and I'm fighting it, then something is probably wrong. Better to just wipe it down, start with a new middle value, start redrawing everything and recorrecting everything. I'm already happier with this face. Throw in a bit more middle values, go a little bit darker in areas, correct the negative space where I changed the outfit around a little bit. Now we're doing the highlights once again, catching a little highlight from that black lotus that's off to the left, adding the blue, and oh my god, I'm feeling so much happier about that face. So now let's go ahead and continue to commit some other things, like this little watering can that's hanging out in the tree with them. We can just kind of beat that up. I just did a bit of a core shadow on it and just did some edge lighting on it. Pretty simple stuff. Again, that's not the point of this piece. I don't want people to go, what a great watercolor. What a great watering can. No, no, no. You want to look at that figure? It's all supporting elements. The other thing I did in this piece, as you've noticed by now, is that the planters that the lotuses are in are actually helmets. I thought that'd be a pretty cool idea. It's just something I came up with on my own. There's something about it that's sort of like life out of death. Those sorts of things, maybe some sort of ancestral sort of thing going on here uh, uh, with these elves who work in these woods. Maybe they're vanquished enemies and they're growing life out of the, the, the death of their vanquished enemies. Something like that. But I just like that it gave a little bit more story to the piece. So they were pretty easy to do. Once again, once I got those middle values right and dented them up a little bit with a couple of shadowing here and there. Now we're going in with some darker leaves on top, really bringing in the foreground, overlapping them over this helmet so that we feel like we're kind of peering in between this stuff. I'm beginning to light up that lotuses in some areas. So inside that helmet, that lotus is kind of glowing a little bit. We don't see the lotus yet. Correcting some of my little ropes that are holding the helmets aloft in the air. Got to remember to go down to the lower right side. You know, I'm so interested in the upper left and in that figure that, oh yeah, okay, come on, let's get down in here and do this helmet, Scott. Same thing, we got the liner brush out and we're doing our little lines around that helmet to activate it. But really the star of the show is of course the main figure. Doing a little bit more rendering on the ropes, just going in and drawing stuff. It's all tedious, tedious work, guys. But, you know, the plan was set up so I'm able to sort of just execute and I can look at my original tonal value drawing to go with. I've decided to treat the lotuses as mainly silhouette with a little bit of rendering on them and then some outlining in sort of a, a glowing color of some sort. Let's add a little bit of water inside there, perhaps. Now we know we have that formula. We can do the same thing here. We're turning this one red. Why not? That's the red lotus. Lighting the inside of that rope, too. That little edge lighting goes a long way to separate things. And if you have a glowing magical source, you can run that edge lighting around so many ways and make things really pop easily. Even running that on the hair there, you can see on the figure, that little blue glow, some of that is hitting the figure. Now we can go ahead and commit to the white lotus, which again, isn't going to be pure white because I don't want it to have too much contrast. But uh, you get the idea. Let's go crazy with this glow over here. This is the Black Lotus. It's the most important one. Let's outline that. I started doing some funky, cool, like abstracty kind of stuff, but it wasn't enough. I need to push this thing even further. All right, a little bit of green light coming in. Yeah, it's cool. It's got some vibe to it. Now we've got some more highlighting going on. Okay, it's really starting to pop. It's really, nope, time to do this. Get out a stencil. This is just a stencil I got at Michael's or whatever. And I'm using a makeup brush, this guy right here actually, and fuzzing in that cool glow shape that you see, that flower shape that's around there. And uh, once that's established, we do a little spattering on top of that. And yeah, now we're feeling better about it. Filling in the negative space or filling in the leaves down at the bottom in a flat graphic is coming next. And now we're just going to tidy up sort of the rest of the image. 
Go ahead and knock in the back side of that skirt, cut it in with some, you know, oh, I don't know, like a dirty green sort of color. We just want to push that value back, but I don't want that shadow to be black because I don't want there to be too much weight down there because we don't want to distract from our figure. Once again, always considering that. What's the star of your story? Everything needs to support the star of the story and high contrast is something that can uh, take away from it. Finally, we did some more detailing on the leaves at the bottom and the trees and the deep space. And here you go, folks, the finished Bloom Tinder card for Double Masters. Did a little bit more texture on that tree too. Worked it a little bit harder, as you can see. I liked how those trees in the background were sitting back in atmosphere, really far back. That's some very subtle stuff, like a little bit of a darker green on a lighter green. And there's the final card. Alrighty, folks. I hope you enjoyed checking out Bloom Tinder with me. It was a blast to do this card. And uh, my thanks to Magic Gathering and the guys at Wizards of the Coast uh, for hooking me up with this card. This was a, a treat to do. Even got a little bit of water splashing out of the helmets you can see coming out of the eye sockets there of the helmets. And uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. Until next time. I don't know. Play some magic. Yeah. <laughs>